Now your software is installed and hardware configured, you are ready to start testing machines. But before you do, there are some things you need to consider. First, determine the test plane. On a typical three-axis machining center, you can test in XY, YZ, or ZX. Your choice will depend on which axis you are interested in and the way in which the machine is used. On a lathe, you would typically choose the ZX plane. Next, give some thought to where in the machine's working envelope the test will be carried out. It makes sense to test a location on the machine where the work is done, particularly if it is a large or elongated machine where it is not possible to encompass the entire working plane in a single test. Be careful to take into account any obstructions, such as fixtures and work holding devices that may interfere with the ball bar path. Determine the ball bar test length. You may wish to choose a length that covers as much of the working plane as possible to give you a good overview of the machine condition. Alternatively, you may choose a length that is similar to the size of the parts that are produced on the machine. Determine the feed rate, normally a value close to that used in your machining operations. It is important to note that ball bar length and feed rate will have an effect on test results. In general, you should use shorter length and faster feed rates if your primary interest is in machine dynamics such as servo mismatch, reversal spikes and vibration. You should use longer lengths and slower feed rates if your primary interest is in machine geometry such as straightness and squareness. Another important consideration is the machine temperature and its expansion coefficient. Temperature can have a very significant effect on machine performance and accuracy and by inputting these values into the ball bar software, the test results can be normalized to ensure correlation between tests taken and parts manufactured at different temperatures. Be sure to measure the temperature as accurately as possible. It is the core temperature of the machine you are looking for, so be careful not to take a surface reading in a location that has been subject to localized heating, perhaps by a lamp or the sun. Take multiple readings if you can on the bed or frame and average them to obtain a representative value. Alternatively, you may choose to measure the temperature of the ball screw, as this has a direct effect on linear accuracy, but it is often difficult to access. The effects of temperature on a machine tool can be very significant, and it is beneficial to have a thorough understanding of the subject. This is one of the topics covered in formal training classes at Renishaw facilities around the world. A measurement error of just 1 degree Celsius is equivalent to a position error of approximately 12 microns on a 1,000 mm axis. It is equally important to use the correct expansion coefficient for your machine. This value should be obtained from the machine manufacturer if possible. Look at the machine control and identify an available program number. You will need a separate number for each individual test. Finally, determine how you will transfer the part program to the CNC control, either via a USB drive, memory card, diskette, or even by entering manually.